Hi guys, my name is Michael and this is channel not just for the PS Vita fans, welcome! Today I've got another PS Vita Homebrew News video coming at you. First I want to quickly look at the new Hot Valve's upcoming handheld, the Steam Deck, that everybody's talking about. Then the Q and PS Vita Homebrew contest is officially over and the winners in each category have been announced, so I'll be checking them out. And later in the video I'll be looking into all of the recent groundbreaking updates that were released for many of the awesome PS Vita ports. So without any further ado, let's dive right into the video. So the Steam Deck. I was really surprised somebody like Valve has announced their up and coming handheld. On the other hand, it was long time coming as it is not really wise to not take advantage of this part of handheld gaming. I believe Valve is definitely able to pull this one off successfully, however, good hardware with great software doesn't necessarily manifest straight into the success as we all know. There might be other unexpected surprises that is gonna catch us off guard and that we need to be prepared for. So all what's left is wait until Christmas and see what they're gonna present to us. The main question being, am I gonna buy the Steam Deck? Well, as I already said, I'm not an early adapter and I doubt I will have spare 500 quid to throw at some handheld, especially at the Christmas time. So I reckon I will wait for some price drop and also for some deep dive digital foundry analysis of the machine. All in all, I feel this is gonna be very profitable for the whole handheld community Certainly more profitable than the cheap cash grab called Switch OLED, which is just pure disappointment in my opinion. And, uh, and I'm not even bothered to talk about that one, as we all know it's not really worth it. I can see more value in Switch Lite than Switch OLED, and that one is selling for 100 quid right now, so who cares about Switch OLED? And what about you guys? Are you gonna buy the Steam Deck day one? And what do you think about it? Let me know down below. I'm quickly interrupting the video to bring you the latest news from the Vita Dev who is working hard on his next homebrew title called Call of Vita Black Zone. Really cool title, I have to admit. Thanks to Jaloni271 for helping him to test online features. The creation looks stunning so far and I'm eager to experience some more quality work in progress videos. Remarkable progress guys, keep up the awesome enthusiasm and hard work, it is greatly appreciated. Let's carry on with the Q&A contest. As you may know, there were four categories in total, with quite a lot of contestants competing in each one. First category consisted of games created with the help of existing engine like Unity or GameMaker. There were seven games submitted altogether, but there can only be one winner, and in this case, the winner is the Brain Splitter created by Lappy. It is a cool little vertical shoot 'em up with a twist. You need to control not just one vessel, but two, each with a different joystick. Second place belongs to the Roly Poly, developed by Spartan Fox, and at the third place there is Thrust Shot, created by Vita Hex. I'm fine with this decision, as I feel it's really hard to make unbiased resolution. If I would be judge, I'm not sure what my decision making process would consist of, but if I meant to say which one did I enjoy the most, perhaps it would indeed be the Brain Splitter as the concept is really unique. Roly Poly and Thrust Shot deserved its position too. Next category is a game created from scratch without the help of an existing engine and the winner is clearly the Treasure Chaser, created by the Crate. This was quite straightforward decision in my opinion as the game is undoubtedly the most intriguing one out of the bunch. The concept is also unique and I enjoyed my time playing it. 
Second place is dedicated to the Happy Blocks by His Armin. And the third spot is occupied by Guess It by the Hole in Wolf and Chelsea Software. Following category is an utility homebrew or a plugin, and the winner is Vita Recorder by Renegatamente. This victory is also deserved, as this plugin is surely the most useful and the most sophisticated one, as it used to be just a dream to record the screen on your PS Vita, but now it is a reality. Thanks, Rin! On the second position, there is a walk created by Pathway27. And it is a plugin that allows us to read a text file walkthrough while playing a game. I consider this one also very useful and very handy tool. The third place belongs to the Vita Homebrew Sorter by Joel16. By the way guys, in case you want to find out more about any of the games, I will leave the link for the QN website down below. Plus I've created some videos about it too and I'll put some cards in the right corner. I got also whole QN playlists, so if you are eager, Feel free to check it out. Last category and I guess the fans favorite is the port of an application or a game from another system. And the winner is the drum roll, the Crashlands, ported by Misery. Here's also his another port called Ink on the third place. And in between on the second position there is squeezed the Vanilla Conquer by Nordfear. This victory is also deserved and if I would be the judge perhaps I would pick Vanilla Conquer. But just because I'm biased towards it and I played it as a kid, so I guess it's good I'm not a judge and the decision is made by someone who understands the other side of the coin as well. The quality of the port itself with all in between. The QN contest was a great success and I'm thrilled it went so well. I would like to thank all the people who created it as well as all the participants who took part. Well done guys, this is exactly what this community needs. Keep up the great work and enjoy your PS Vitas with all the excellent creations. Viva la vita! Last but certainly not least, we can't forget about all the fine-tuned groundbreaking updates that were released in the last couple of weeks. First very important one was the RE3, the PS Vita port of the GTA 3 which now supports the video playback of the cutscenes among any other among many other bug fixes. Then there were all the rest of the updates for the games including the latest release of the Shadow Warrior, the JFSW Vita, update for the Vita RTCW, the port of the PS Vita port of the Return to the Castle Wolfenstein with huge performance boost among many other bug fixes. Vita Voyager also released a huge performance boost. If you are actively playing any of these games, don't forget to update and install the new VPK to take advantage of these updates. I have already installed some of the updates, but I haven't really got time to check it out, so I will be doing that uh, in the uh, next couple of days. The video is coming to its final stage, where I tell you, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with other PS Vita enthusiasts. It means a lot to me and to the YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to check out our Discord server and follow me on social media. You can now also buy me a coffee. All the links are down below. Sub to the channel means you most likely won't miss upcoming content. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.